Devils back with a vengeance already exceeding 2019 levels. It's expected to be a record year for the tourism industry. And here to tell us what's new and trending in travel for 2023 is St. Louis native, sustainable travel and human connection expert, Michaela Guzzi. Michaela, thanks so much for joining us this morning. And tell us a little bit about yourself because you're also the founder of Oh, the People You Meet. So for people who don't know, what is that? Oh, the People You Meet is a content house and a show that's actually beginning to air in January in flight on Qatar Airways, as well as KTLA in Los Angeles, and hopefully soon other places as well. Um, but we focus on people, places, and purposes all across the globe. That is so cool. So tell us a little bit about what your top travel trend is for the new year. I know a lot of people have been cooped up in the house and <laughs> we want to go somewhere, probably somewhere warmer too. Well, when I was in St. Louis over Thanksgiving, I left and returned only yesterday. I've flown 18,670 miles just to be here with you guys today. I know, crazy, oh my back. Um, but I've gone to international luxury travel market in France, as well as the World Travel and Tourism Council in Saudi Arabia to uncover all the top trends in travel, sustainable travel, human connection, and also how to be more responsible travelers so that we leave a positive impact on the people and places that we visit. And so one big trend that I've found is vintage and everything's making a comeback. So okay. what's old is new again. Clothes, cocktails, hotels, cars. It's all about vintage this year. Um, I think I want to be you when I grow <laughs> up. Um, so what exactly is sharing the economy and, and, and what you've learned along the way with it? Yeah, so the sharing economy, I'll give this great example of like clothing for okay. it. So when I travel, I love to go to vintage shops. I'll wear my grandfather's ski sweater, especially on days like today. I'll go source out that local woman uh, who works with textiles on Lake Atitlan in Guatemala, and then I'll resell the clothes or give them away when I'm done. So it brings it all back full circle. And one hotel that does vintage so, so well is the Stafford Hotel in London. That picture that you saw before is the vermouth-based Negroni Anfora. It's at their American bar and it is absolutely delicious. And the hotel itself started in the 17th century as a wine cellar and there are secret passageways that actually connect to the palace. I don't know how cool is that. Yeah. And during World War II, they housed American and Canadian officers. So it has a really nice tie back to America. Um, and then one of the other things I love about London is you have to get out on town and why not on a bicycle for a gin safari with Tally Ho? I know, so fun, kind of drunk bicycling, why not, you know? But um, they give you little tweed caps and vintage bikes, and it's just a cool way to see a cool city. Yeah, and to learn some history. What else is on your list anywhere outside of Europe, too? Oh, well, I went to Saudi Arabia. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it was my 114th passport stamp. Wow. There's a great new hotel there by the Radisson Collection. You need to get out into the town, uh, see the Masmak Fort to learn about the culture. Here's a little something about shifting perspective. So when they pour you a cup of coffee, they'll give you a half a glass, and that's actually a compliment. That means they want you to stay and to serve you more. If they fill you up, it means they're good. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> and if they give you less, it means they're cheap. So like totally just shifted my perspective on the glasses half full. Okay. That is interesting. I like it though. Right? And I mean, <laughs> seriously, if you go to Saudi Arabia, it just reopened to the entire world and they have uh, Deria Gate, which I got to have a sneak peek at. That's around since 1766 and it's oh. a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and I went out to the edge of the world, which literally feels exactly exactly like that. And I went with this local guide, Ghazi Tours, um, who really was an interesting person that I could have some really deep conversations with. So one more question before, mm. unfortunately, we have to <laughs> cut this interview short. I could talk to you all day, but what's the most exciting travel news that you learned at some of these travel conferences you've gone to? Oh, I, so much, but I have to say that what is more nostalgic than train travel? And Orient Express, which is owned by Accor Hospitality, are bringing back the most legendary train, which is the Orient Express, which went from Paris to Constantinople in 1883. They're bringing it back, and it's called La Dolce Vita, go 
going across Italy, and in, in 2025, they're bringing back 17 of the original cars, 1920s and 1930s. I'll tease it out. There's something called the Great Transformation, and we'll okay. just say it involves lighting, costume, and decor changes. Ooh. See you on board? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to come with you sometime. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michaela, for joining us this morning. If you missed anything in this segment or want to watch it again, we'll post this to our website, fox2now.com. We'll be right back with much more Fox 2 News in the morning. Stay with us.